Hey everybody, today Rado talks through a quick update to Dungeon Alliance, which is a very, very cool deck building dungeon crawl that I did a run through for last year when it was on Kickstarter. And I've now got in my hands a final release copy. And I think it's going to be coming to stores soon, so I figured I'd spend a few minutes letting everybody know what the final game looks like instead of my rough and ready prototype, plus what has been added since I did the original run through. And here's a game. Set up uh, midway through a couple of alliances working their way. And obviously the biggest change is minis. No more little prototype standees. Neat minis running through the dungeon fighting all kinds of bad guys who are still represented by the little squares that give you all their stats at a glance. Like say this scary spider. Uh, let's actually go on ahead and show you a mini up close so you can get an idea of the level of detail for these. Here's a little warrior type guy with his big gigantic axe ready to do some damage and a bunch more minis actually so there they all are as you can see looking nice and of course a ton of tokens and uh, dungeon tiles and all that and obviously, since it's a deck builder, a ton of cards as well, which are all nice, high quality, um, you know, with, with, with good looking fantasy art and all the rest of it. Now, that's in terms of components, what you get, but I think the most important thing to talk about is the quests. Oh yeah, this did not exist when I did my run through before. It was a competitive or you could play solo or cooperative game where basically you are just trying to play until you filled out the dungeon and killed all the bad guys and then whoever had the most points wins. You can still play that way and you can still play it solo or cooperative where you're just trying to do, uh, you know, you try and beat your best score. But quests are where it's really at. These are a new system and the way they work, there are 12 of them. Four level ones, twos, and threes. And what you're supposed to do is, as part of setup, after you've got your dungeon and your tiles you're going to draw and all the rest of it set up, you draw three of them, uh, level one, a level two, and a level three. So in this game, there might have been, we have to beat the level three boss, Castrum. So he's going to be out there somewhere. And then we need a level two quest. Oh, there's another level three. A level two quest. The Trapper's Plans we have to deal with. And we need a level one quest. Um, a mentor. Okay, so these are out public knowledge from the get-go throughout the entire game and they have certain trigger events that you need to do to put the whatever pieces are necessary for it on the board. And the interesting thing is in the competitive game, you know, this becomes another way to score points at the end of the game. Instead of just fighting monsters like crazy or even your human opponents, you could try to complete these things. Uh, let's see, here's uh, the Trapper's Plans. And of course there's a ton of them with a lot of variety. And it's nice that these quests kind of encourage you to do things other than just fight, fight, fight. Although, wait, okay, there's all the bosses. The Goblin King, the Dark Empress. But okay, there's a caravan. You can go ahead and pause and see what the particulars of these quests are, what you have to do to start them, what you have to do to complete them and score their points. But the interesting thing is, if you are playing solo or cooperative, instead of just running out the deck and counting your score, there is an alternate win scenario where, depending on whether you're playing on easy, medium, normal, or hard, you have to beat one, two, or all three of these quests before time runs out. And that, if you remember from my run-through, was my biggest complaint about the game. That as a co-op, which by the way, all the, to play the co-op, you've got all these AI cards that the bad guys are going to be using to move around unassisted by players. So that system is still there. In the original game, I thought the co-op was very, very nice and the, the AI system worked well, but we were just not keen on trying to beat our best score. Now that we have a time limit to try and defeat one, two, or three quests, depending on our difficulty level, things get a lot more interesting, a lot more fun. Oh, another interesting thing too, these bosses that come out, they all have their own decks because unlike the regular game where when the bad guys come around, it's up to the players to move them in. In some cases, when you're playing competitively, make certain decisions for them. The bosses, they make all their own decisions 
because they've got their own private decks that determine what they do, what they're capable of. So that's kind of a nice uh, twist as well. Let's see. And uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, pretty much what I showed in the original run through still stands. It's a very, very smart game of deck building after drafting to get your perfect adventure dungeon alliance that are going to run out there and um, take care of business in the dungeon. And that's it, folks. Just a quick update for Dungeon Alliance. And uh, if you want, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen to go check out my original run through to get an idea of how the deck building works and all the rest of it. Still, great, great game made even better. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye bye.